Hi guys, we already talked in part one um, our basics of uh, our bumping and our bounding and talked about how uh, in the small unit approach our exact personnel order is not really very important unless we have um, attachments or special weapons with us. Um, and so we're going to expand on that now. I want to talk a little bit about danger area crossing. So we kind of used the road as example in the video before, um, but those are very small, very short things. Now we're going to talk about um, danger areas. Uh, for example, I have a bridge uh, here, but this could be um, bridge. It could be a large road. It could be an open area if I'm traveling in the woods, um, like a clearing, things like that that we have to cross that are very dangerous. It's a danger area. All right, so. I already talked that um, I, in my personal experience, bounding is by far more effective than bumping in every single way. And so uh, from my perspective, that's how we're going to write that. So we're talking about um, crossing a bridge here. All right, so something that um, I've got a lot of experience with. Based on where we were um, in Iraq on my second deployment, we had to cross um, bridges all the time. And so we got a lot of good practice at this. And, um, and so these are kind of some observations, some changes I made to uh, the basics when I do this. So for example, um, we come up to this bridge and we know we have to cross it. Beforehand, if I know I have to cross this bridge, I will arrange my elements before I get there. I was a squad leader, so um, a squad in the Marine Corps is 13 guys, not a squad leader, and then three teams of four. So if I knew we were going to cross a bridge, a danger area, I would pre-arrange my fire teams if I needed to to make sure that I had um, the exact order that I wanted. So as we're patrolling, as we're coming up and we know we have this bridge, so we're going to go ahead and send that first element. So we got this first element is gonna go ahead and post up uh, right on our side of the bridge. So what they're gonna be doing is they're gonna be orienting their security, their observation, their fires at the far side of the bridge. So we continue our movement through. So the second element, because we're bounding, is gonna go ahead and push past them. So rather than bump them at the bridge, all right, and have a huge clusterfuck of all sorts of dudes right there, we're just gonna keep our patrolling formation, our space and everything, and come across this bridge. Now, depending on how big of a danger area this is, you may want to run across it. Usually when we were crossing the bridges that we always had to cross, we definitely double time across it. There were two, 300 meters at most. If this sucker is a mile long, you might not want to freaking double time it because you're going to be exhausted. So this second element, they bound past and they come over onto this opposite side. So as soon as they get to the opposite side, this unit right here is going to go ahead and obviously watch their fire, watch their freaking muzzle discipline and not be flagging everybody over here. And they're going to start to reorient themselves back this way. So now, it needs to be said, while this element is crossing the danger area, we kind of have a no-go line that's about in the middle. So if we're coming across the bridge and we get to this position here and we start taking contact from the far side of that bridge, because I haven't made it halfway yet, almost always the best idea is to just retreat back in my steps and come back to the nearest side. Whereas the opposite is also true. If I've already made it most of the way across the bridge, it's a farther distance under fire to fall back in position. So it's probably a better idea to advance to contact on this same side. Okay, so we got our first two elements are in place here. So now once he's there, this element is gonna go ahead and provide their security on this side. They're also gonna do things like check around where they are for booby traps, IEDs, mines, observation, keep people back, vehicles back, all that stuff. Same thing with this element when they get there. So now we got this third element. They're going to go ahead and bound past everybody. Once they get all the way across this danger area, the bridge in this example, they're going to continue their mission. So they're going to come right across and they're going to continue moving or patrolling or whatever it is that they're going to do. Now, usually I'm going to tell them to slow down a little bit or maybe pick a point, a rally point beyond that and stop as we go ahead and pick our units back up. So now that we've gone ahead and uh, we've got all our units arrayed either on the bridge or across the bridge. We're going to go ahead and break it down in reverse order. So now this first element is going to become across the bridge. They're going to come in the rear. So they're going to keep their security to the rear. They're going to go ahead and move and bypass this element that's still providing security. So while they're providing security, this element is going to go ahead and turn around. They're going to start providing security back on this side of the bridge. They've got an element in front of them to provide them security and they've got friendlies in front they don't want to flag. So this unit is going to go ahead and turn around and provide security while the second one's crossing. Then once this unit's across, now we're back in our patrol order, our fire team order, our squad order, whatever um, tactical unit size that we're talking about, and we're gonna go ahead and continue mission. So nice and simple. So we've got near side security while we're moving across. Once we get an element across, now we have far side and near side security. We punch the next element all the way across, and then we break it down in reverse order. While we're bringing this one across, we provide far side security, and we just roll on with ourselves. Now again, use the bridge in this example. Could be um, a major 
hill, could be a valley, could be a, a river, a road, um, could just be a clearing, depends on what it is. Again, nice and simple, all right, when we're moving nice and flexible, that's why we use the bounding technique. Everything about that was flexible. We have no point during this entire movement where we have two fire teams worth of people bunched up like we would when we were bounding. So now we keep our spacing better, our tactical acumen, our flexibility is much better. All right, so go ahead, keep paying attention. We're gonna keep putting more of these videos out. Remember guys, only the hits count and you can never miss fast enough to catch back up.